Okay, so let's check this on for size. Believe it or not, I'm in a dark room and I'm not being lit by any light whatsoever. Or I should say, the only thing that is lighting me is a monitor. And this is the OCLCM215 HDR Plus monitor. And holy cow, this sucker is bright. All right, today I wanna to talk about one of my all time favorite pieces of equipment to have on any set, pretty much period. And that is going to be a production field monitor. It is such a critical thing to have on every set. And I wanna take a look at kind of a unique one today because this is the OC LCM 215 HDR Plus. Now this is a full HD monitor that packs an incredible 1500 nits of brightness in it which means that this thing is more than powerful enough to take outside and shoot in the middle of the day, or if you're in a situation where you have a lot of lights and you're in slow motion, have just a really bright psych wall, this monitor you can take on set is pretty much gonna guarantee you have a good, easily viewable experience wherever you go. And before I really get into this, I think it's gonna be important to talk about why a production monitor is such an important tool to have. Now, once you move from your kind of run and gun type jobs and you're starting out, you're gonna find that the need to effectively communicate your vision to multiple people becomes, honestly, it's one of the most crucial components you can have on a set. And you're gonna find yourself needing to share your image with clients, crew members, and actors. So this becomes one of the most important communication tools you will ever have on a set. Now, if you have this kind of static studio space that you shoot all the time, you absolutely can take an old TV you have lying around and convert it into a monitor like this. But that's not necessarily the best solution. For one thing, those things are very immobile, they're impractical to move around the sets, and they're missing some critical tools that you're gonna wanna have once you start working with a real production monitor. You're just not gonna get that on an old TV set. So as you can probably tell, I have been using monitors on sets a lot because they are so incredibly useful. But the traditional problem I run in with production monitors is that they are very, very expensive. You know, they kind of run anywhere from four to seven up to $10,000. And honestly, this was just too much for me to go and buy for something like this. The problem that I found with this recently is that I needed to get a production monitor because I am shooting a film this summer. And I knew I would need something practical, affordable, that I could actually have access to that I wouldn't have to worry about returning because I was gonna be using this for rehearsals and other components like this. So because of this, I was looking for a monitor that had all the powerful tools that I needed that was practical and really good quality, but didn't break the bank. And to my surprise, it's really hard to find any good monitor that's under this several thousand dollar point range. But as fate would so happen to have it, I was able to find a really surprisingly affordable and powerful monitor here from OC. Now, full disclosure here, when I did find out about this monitor, I was very, very intrigued about this. And I did reach out to OC because I was very interested in reviewing this to see if this actually made sense and covered that gap that I was looking for in a production monitor. Now, OC did send me a unit for review, but I am not being paid for this and they do not get to review anything that I say. They literally sent me a unit for review and they told me, go ahead, make an honest review about it. And that's what I'm gonna do for you. Now, the OCLCM215 HDR Plus is a full HD production monitor that comes in at an incredibly affordable $1,239. That makes it up to 75% cheaper than most of the production monitors you're gonna find out there. And I was really, really surprised as I got in there just how many awesome production tools that were packed in this monitor. Aside from it being insanely bright, it actually has all the tools that I personally wanna get on a site. And this is the thing that I need to communicate with my crew, my cast, and my clients and it's all on such a really, really nice form, function, and price point. Now, it is important to note that this is a full HD 1920 by 1080, but it is not a 4K monitor. Now, personally for me, this is not that big of an issue because as a production monitor, 1080 is more than enough to get a great image, and I have no problem using this to achieve critical focus, get my exposure, and check where I'm at with the production. The other thing is that, honestly, most of the wireless uh, systems that I go that project the image still project as a 1080 image. So I love having a 1080 image, it has always been more than enough for me on a set. The other thing about this that I really like is that keeping with a nice production monitor, it comes with a C-stand adapter, which is <laughs> absolutely critical to make it practical for an on-set production monitor. Yeah, it has these feet, but let's be honest, if you're using this on a set, you're gonna wanna throw it on some kind of stand and look around, and this comes with a nice little stand right here on the back that lets you put it on a C-stand 
very, very easy. And one last note here on the back is there is this nice handle that comes right here that makes it really easy to pick this up and go. Now the first thing you should know about this monitor is that it is crazy, crazy bright. I mean, it packs a whopping 1,500 nits of brightness, which means that you should have no problem whatsoever if you wanna take this outdoor in a shooting condition. And in addition to having such a crazy bright display, there's also an included sun hood that comes with it that honestly, this thing's so bright, even when I was outside at midday in the summer, it really didn't even need it. I felt that I really don't need a hood on this thing because this thing is already so bright. And now while this brightness is also really useful for and helpful for outdoor shooting, it's also gonna be really nice if you're in a studio environment, especially if you have a situation where you have lots of lights bouncing around. But in all honesty, I almost never have to push this unit that high. I mean, it is so bright at 1500 nits that Usually when I'm in a studio, I can put this thing at one, two, or three on the, on the brightness level, and it's gonna be more than enough to compensate for my studio environment. You can actually see right here on the camera right now, I have this monitor right now set to its lowest level, and you can still see just how bright that is. The other thing that I think is fantastic about this is this actually has a great anti-glare component. I'm gonna move it around there, and you can see that even if I move this straight there, I'm literally pointing straight at a light, and even then the glare is not that bad. So if you're in a studio, this has some of the best anti-glare I've ever seen on a screen. And I was very, very surprised at how much it aided me in the viewability of this compared to other monitors that I've used in the past. And just in case you do wanna see the brightness comparison, I have a Ninja Atomos 5 right here, and you can see I have this thing cranked up all the way, and it's still not as bright as this OC is when I have this one cranked all the day. The other thing y'all think you'll notice too, if I turn it, you can see the glare on there is much, much more than when I turn it here on the OC. So the glare and the power on this monitor are absolutely fantastic. You just better be prepared that if you've used other monitors in the past, it's probably going to spoil you a little bit. Now, another aspect of a production monitor that is absolutely critical is going to be your power options here for your production monitor. Now, the good news is this, this actually has three options. You can get either a gold mount or a V mount, depending on what you wanna get, and it has an ACN. So there's a DCN and an ACN as well. That gives you multiple options. So if you're in a studio with a plug-in, you can plug this in, but if you're out in the field, you can just throw a V mount on there and you're going to get a very, very good, useful, practical light that you can move around. Because sometimes you just don't wanna deal with the plug. The other thing about this, it's got a pretty good energy draw from my experience. Basically, when I had about a 98 hour watt battery on there, even in full light outside, I could get about two hours on that at blasting power from a 98 watt V-mount battery. However, in a way that I usually use it, which is a studio environment where I drop it way down, I was able to get five, six hours at a time on one of these batteries. So honestly, this thing has such a great power draw in a studio situation. I think if you show up with two batteries or you cut this thing throughout the day, you can probably get away with one. But honestly, if you have two, two batteries should last you all day and give you that flexibility that comes from a V-mount battery. Now, in addition to the batteries on the back here, you do have two SDIs and one HDI input, as well as headphones, ethernet, and a USB port. Now, there's also one SDI output from this, but you do need to be aware that this will not cross convert. You can't put in an SDI signal and kick out an HDI signal, and there's also no HDMI out. So that's one thing that you know you should be aware about if you're looking at this. Okay, so now we're back here in the front again, and I do want to kind of talk about what I consider one of the coolest parts about this is this OC LCM 215 HDR Plus actually comes with 30 LUTs that convert log mode to Rec. 709 for most of the major camera brands. This includes Ari, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Fujifilm, and even GoPro. So what that means is that you can export a log signal from your camera and right here, it'll convert it in this monitor to the LUTs that come with those systems. And then on top of that, the LCM 215 HDR also provides 14 HDR 3D LUTs that further convert log mode into a Rec. 2020. And that comes for Ari, Canon, Panasonic, Red and Sony. So if you're in a situation where you're on an HDR set and you need to check to see how your HDR image will look, you can easily hit that and get a LED on there to look that. So that makes this really, really useful. HDR productions are becoming more and more common and knowing that's there kind of gives you a little bit of future proofing about this system. Now there is one note about HDR that you do need to be aware of and that is that in the setting, 
this monitor will set itself to its highest backlight setting, so you won't be able to dial it down like you will in SDR settings. So if you plan on running this monitor on batteries, like out in a field where you don't have rechargers and all that stuff, just be aware of that because that will burn through your batteries faster if you're going HDR monitoring. But it's one of those things you could put an HDR signal up, check it real quick and go back to standard definition and be able to extend your battery life. But it is something you should be aware that this monitor does. In addition to the provided LUTs, because this has a USB port on the back of it, you can upload 16 of your own custom LUTs and store them in the system too. So that means you can go dial in exactly the look you want and know you're gonna get a really good accurate look at that right here on set. So being able to do not only the industry standard LUTs that you expect from your biggest cameras, but being able to take your custom ones really makes this practical and flexible as a production monitor. Now I did talk about the batteries and kind of the build and ruggability of something like this that separates it from a TV, but one of the main things that makes a production monitor a production monitor is going to be the tools on it. And honestly, if you don't get good tools on a production monitor, it's really not worth playing with because then it just kind of defeats the point of it. And the first one that I do want to point out is going to be false color. I'm going to pull it up real quick right here with a quick button. And I really like how this is set up on this system because you can set your false colors to be calculated for different cameras. There are actually 17 different log curves built into the system. This is gonna cover all your big logs that you'll deal with, such as S-Log3 or S-Log2 from Sony. You have Log C from Aria. You have all the red logs. You have Canon C-Log2, C-Log3. You have Panasonic V-Log. All those things are built here in the system. And I'll know now that the false color is going to match exactly what I'm seeing there in the camera. This is very, very helpful because you wanna be able to sit on the set and I love being able to quickly punch up my false color and see where I'm gonna set and not have to run back the camera. So this is a really, really cool feature and it's one that I was really surprised to see at any monitor that comes at this price point. And in addition to this awesome false color, there's also a lot of other really functional things that you're gonna end up using. So you can have zebra that will be adjusted from one to 100, depending if you wanna do it for skin tones or for highlights. It also comes with a focus assist and it comes with peaking. There's also a really good set of scope tools that come built in this. This includes waveform, vector scope, and histogram. And so, for instance, I use my waveform all the time. So I can come in there, I can do a waveform, I can even come into color, or I can do an RGB parade and see it. Now, I like putting it up here in the top corner, but you can have it spread across the bottom depending how you like. In addition to this, you can dictate how you want markers to appear on there. This is very, very helpful if you're going to things. So for instance, if I'm shooting a movie and I have a 235 aspect ratio, you can see now I have a 235 aspect ratio there and I can control the opacity on the top and bottom. So I can still see what's there or not there. If I want to get it off, I just click the button again and it goes away. But the thing about these tools that I think makes this system really useful is the fact of how they can be accessed with these custom buttons that are down here on the bottom. And this is one area of the design that I really, really do like. Now, as you can see, you have four quick custom buttons that are on the bottom of this monitor. Now, you can program these to be anything you want. Any of the major tools that you find yourself needing, you can use. But this is what I really like about it. Not only are there four of them down there, but they're labeled one, two, four. You can set four different sets of settings based on that. But if you hold any of these down for two seconds, it can take you in another set. So that means that you can pretty quickly jump to 16 custom buttons right here on the bottom. So that means if you wanna access stuff like your false color, zebras, peaking, focus assist, waveform, markers, anamorphic settings, you can quickly do it very, very fast without having to jump into a menu. I really, really like this. I found myself after I got this thing initially set up, that's how I did it. And after about a half hour fiddling with this thing, I never really have to jump back in the menu ever again because I got all that I want baked in here to my custom button. So as you can see, this system comes with a lot of really useful and very, very cool tools that honestly, I was not expecting to see in anything coming at this price point. Usually these things are tools that I see in much, much more expensive systems. So I was really, really pumped to see that. Now I do wanna say one note about color accuracy for those of you out there that are wondering about this. Now, this monitor does come with a number of specific camera LUTs and you can upload your own calibrated LUTs to it. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. But I would keep in mind, this is a field and production monitor. This is not a broadcast monitor. And why I found the colors to be very reliable, 
And just remember, this is not a Flanders Scientific, which costs several thousand dollars more. I mean, this can be a very, very important tool to use for exposure, and you can check your colors with it. But if you want a super to the pixel color accurate monitor, I think you're kind of thinking of this as a wrong thing. This is a production field monitor. This is not going to be a high end color grading monitor. So I think that's an important thing to remember. Now, as far as transporting things this round, you do need to come up with a solution with it because it is not small, it's, it's got some size to it, and it does not come with a case. What is cool is that it comes in the packaging with a foam insert that can easily go into a Pelican case 1600. So you can literally get that, it's pre-cut, you can slip that right on there. I personally found that for me, I actually got an iMac 24 inch carrying case that slipped on there, it was honestly pretty cheap, it didn't take up a lot of space in my car, and let me go and quickly move and do this all around. So that really worked for me. Now, of course, there is no system out there that is perfect. And there are a lot of things about this that I really do like, but there are some things that you should be aware of, little quirks about it, if you're looking at purchasing this for your set. Now, I am gonna even preface all my con section with this, and that is because of the incredible price point on the products and its advanced features, I actually couldn't help but find myself comparing it to other monitors and features that are much, much more expensive. This, in my opinion, this thing really stands toe to toe with monitors that cost three, four, five, six times as much. So that's kind of how I'm coming from. So. Keep that in mind when you're looking at that. Some of these cons are going to be based just, I think, on some uh, decisions that had to be made just to keep the price affordable. Now, that being said, the first limitation that I did find on this monitor was simply this. You do use monitors in dark environments and these studio buttons are not backlit or illuminated, which means that, you know, you're not gonna be able to see these very easy if you're on a dark set. It would have been nice if these buttons were illuminated. That being said, because I have programmed everything on these four buttons and they're raised and bubbled so you can fill them in the dark, I never had a problem with that, but it is something that would have been nice to have. Another con on this is this unit does not ship with any mounting points on it for wireless transmitters, which if you get them on, I guess you're going to have to get. Now the good news is you can buy these separately and put them on the back. They're very, very useful. They're awesome once they get in there, but just be aware that this does not come with anything on there. Another thing about the OCLCM 215 HDR Plus that I did find not as smooth as I would have liked to have seen it is while you can program these buttons and get them super awesome and set up to go so it's like a one-click thing, it's not a really intuitive native menu system that's built in there. It's a little bit clunky. You know, you do wanna get this and you're gonna to wanna to spend a good 30 minutes or so setting it up before you ever go on set. Now I found once you get it, it's not that crazy, but just be aware, maybe not the most elegant navigation system, but it's certainly not something that I think would actually keep you back. And really the only other con that I would look at that in my opinion wasn't an issue for me, but it will be for some people, so it should be pointed out, is that this is just a standard HD monitor. It is not a 4K monitor. Now, as I said, for me, that doesn't ever affect me on set. I've actually very rarely needed a 4K monitor. A 1080 has always been more than sufficient, especially for this price point. But just be aware, if you are dead set on having a 4K production monitor and want to pay for it, then that one's gonna be what you need to get. This one's probably not for you. So there you go. I mean, my final verdict on all this is that, honestly, I really, really like this monitor. I mean, it's not a perfect system, but it packs such an incredible amount of features for a price point that is almost impossible to beat. I looked around and I saw nothing that even compares with it in this class that I could see. So I just really think that this LCM215 HDR Plus is just one of those tools that it's just gonna make a difference on any set that you're on. And the fact that you can do it for such a great price point, I just know for me personally, I'm gonna be taking this on every shoot I have in the foreseeable future. Anyway guys, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Please leave any notes and comments down below. And yeah, go out there, keep on shooting, and uh, yeah, talk to you soon.